I don't know. This will scare the children. Do you think so? I don't know. Maybe this was too much for them. I think we have to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. Latex. It's not just like other movies where if you're dressed up as a woman, you can fool people because they don't know who you are anyway as a man. You have to fool your own family. You have to fool especially your wife, who's seen you with nothing on. You remind me of someone. People say, you know, there's that method acting of, you know, you create the character and it kind of comes from within. This is one of those things that, as they added the elements, she, you know, she appeared. I always felt that Mrs. Doubtfire would be the grandmother that you always wanted, you know, the perfect grandmother. Hello. Mrs. Hillard, I presume? Yes. I'm Miranda Hillard. Euphigenia Doubtfire. Greg Canham designed the makeup, and Greg did several different sculptures on Robin's face. And we actually had a picture of a woman who resembles Mrs. Doubtfire quite a bit, and it was a black and white picture taken in the 40s. And Greg sort of fashioned this makeup after this picture of this woman that we had. That look took really at one Saturday to, to perfect. Uh, the makeup pieces were put onto Robin. He went through makeup. We'd all decided on a particular wig and hair color that we liked. We found wardrobe that we thought was perfect for Mrs. Doubtfire, the right glasses. And then we did a videotape test. And on that particular videotape test, it's the first time you actually see Mrs. Doubtfire. And the first time you actually, Robin started to feel comfortable in the role. And it's an amazing sort of transformation. It's almost like a screen test because Robin just became Mrs. Doubtfire. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Ephigenia Doubtfire, and I'm very, s excuse me. <laughs> They had a television monitor set up. It was like, ooh, look at that. Ooh, isn't she awesome? And ooh, my fun bags. Look at that. I saw everything and all of a sudden started to play with the voice. It was just so freeing to be able to be someone totally different. Thank you. Hello, your name is? Fred. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, I'll Fred. Take you Please, Fred. You, you look like a biker. Yes. <laughs> the makeup. I think on a good day, it would take three hours, three and a half. Bad day, four hours, four and a half. We knew we had to get it down from there because they wanted to be able to shoot with him for at least 10 hours a day. So if it took us four hours to get him ready and an hour to get him out at night, that was going to make for a very long day for Robin. So the more we did it, the faster we got. Robin's makeup is comprised of eight overlapping foam latex appliances. And they fit together kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. At this point, I'm going in with a colored Pax paint. On top of the Pax, I then go in with rubber mask grease paint, which I'm stippling on now. And that is also done in several layers. I'll do a flesh tone, then I'll go in with a pink tone, and then stipple a flesh tone back on top of it. Now Yolanda is placing the wig on. And there he is. Will Pops have lipstick? Are these what you want, sir? That's mom. <laughs> For a bodysuit. Looks like that old ancient fertility doll that they used to make, the one that was out of clay, the, you know, the one it's like, yeah, with the, uh, yes, with the amazing hands. Are these right. real tits? They're actually kind of frightening when you see them, because they're made out of, it's made out of like a spandex and beans, and you know, it's like a walking beanbag chair. Oh, it feels lovely. Oh, pardon me, it's riding. He was sitting on the couch with um, my two sisters, who's gonna be on the film, and I, I didn't know it, that it was Mrs. Doubtfire or Robin. I just thought, well, it could be like the social worker, the teacher or something. But I, then they introduced me, I was like, oh. And it wasn't even, the makeup wasn't even really done yet still. It was still in its like first stages and it was really amazing then. And you are? I'm Chris. Hello, Chris. Yeah. Hello, oops. <laughs> At that time, the only thing that gave me away because I hadn't yet shaved my hands, I was all of a sudden, they went, hello, and they went, oh, jeez. They thought, here's this old, it's the monkey woman. Oh, my God, Sigourney Weaver's mother. What is it there? Look at that there. It's gorillas in the mist. Oh, no. Let's also look at our hands today. Different makeups on different hands. No longer quest for fire. He's instilled with the spirit of a 65-year-old woman. That's all I can say. I mean, he, he no longer becomes the person I know. He becomes this woman. I really feel like I'm not talking to him anymore, even when he uses his own voice. Stop. Don't do that. There, no, no. Put it down. <laughs> the first voice was a little bit like that. 
and, I, and then it softened up as she got softer, and it kind of, you know, went from being Margaret Thatcher, transitioned a little bit into Julia Childs, and slowly but surely, I, Chris seemed to like that voice more than anything. There, and then if we bring up the tone, up to there, and start to play with a little bit of our S's and our T's, we're very much in the zone, I think. But, you know, and if I want to increase volume, if you're not coming down now, don't make me come up the stairs, because it will not be a pretty picture. Sometimes the first time you see him, Mrs. Doubtfire, get a little scared. Really kind of scares you. But then he doesn't. And Robin really made that, that character. I mean, he gave her a lot of heart, and it really, if it wasn't for him, I mean, I don't think it, it would have been able to pull, been able to be pulled off because um, it was just done really well, and I think it was it was Robin that really made it. Are we close? Any closer, and you'd be mom. 